Welcome to my next From Season 2 episode review video. Before I get into that, though, pretty important if you are caught up to the point where I am in rewatching or watching From, or you're just not entirely sure, then you definitely need to take the initiative and pay attention to the episode's title, which, of course, I'll mention as well as put in the description. If that happens to be the case, you find that you're not caught up, it would be my recommendation that you don't watch this video any further to avoid any potential spoilers. And for all of you out there that are wondering, I've already seen both the seasons of From that have been released thus far. I'm just reviewing all the episodes of From to be ready in time for the season three premiere of From, which happens on September 22nd. Now, I don't know what time the episode actually airs, but hopefully I get that done as soon as possible. If it airs early, early in the morning, like the Walking Dead stuff does when you have their the app, uh, I'll get that done really quickly. If it's like 8 o'clock at night, it might make take me to like 11 o'clock at night. I don't know for sure, but uh, I like the show from. I think it's pretty solid. I don't think it's amazing, though. It worries me that it might end with like a bad like a bad M. Night Shyamalan twist, but who knows. But uh, I like the show, and I wanted to cover it for everybody. So with all that said, this will be from Season 2, Episode 9. The title of this episode is called Ball of Magic Fire. And this will be my review, reaction, recap after just finishing watch the episode so boyd and kenny follow reggie inside and he shows them paula's horrifically broken body reggie explains that she was resting while he was downstairs and he heard her screaming he tried to wake her but she was talking in her sleep before it was if it was her entire body cracked and reggie begins to sob obviously and boyd asks what paula was saying in her sleep and Boyd tells him that he needs to tell him what Paula says. And Reggie says she kept on repeating, they touch, they break, they steal. No one here is free before dying. Boyd asks if she still was asleep. And Reggie angrily answers yes as he continues to break down. Boyd leaves to think outside and sees a number of concerned people from the town. Uh, Ethan asks if everything is all right. And Boyd tells him yes and uh, asks if he can go home while he talks to Julie. Tian Chen leads Ethan home while he and Kenny tell Julie that they have 30 minutes before dark and need to go door to door and tell everyone that they can't be alone. And Julie asks what is going on and Boyd says that something killed Paula in her sleep. So everyone has to stay awake and Julie then remembers that her father is in the RV and the reason why he's going door to door is because it's still light out and people are dying now in the light. So there's danger Jim is shocked while Randall insists that Donna is in on the conspiracy and he saw her bo her burn Smiles' body, asking if it was a faulty animatronic. Donna says Boyd managed to kill it and Randall says she is changing the rules. Randall tells Jim that this is his uh, this was his idea and Jim calls him crazy. Randall insists that Donna is a part of the reason they are trapped. Jim moves to free Donna, but Randall grabs him and voices the possibility that Jim put all these ideas in his head to see what he uh, would do and asks how he knows Jim isn't a part of it too. And then Jim angrily points out that his house collapsed on top of him and asks what is wrong with uh, Randall. Jim tries to untie Donna, but Randall throws him down and draws his knife. Boyd then arrives and fires his gun in the air and orders him to drop the knife and Jim apologizes for what's happened and cuts down a loose while Boyd says they have five minutes to get to safety before dark. But Randall throws the keys away and says they will have to stay the night and see what happens. Julie stands on the porch looking for her father as she hears the sounds of the cicadas. Tabitha tells her to come inside as Jade and Victor arrive. Ethan says they can't leave their father out there, but Julie assures him that he will be fine. And Tabitha adds that Boyd will keep him safe, and the best thing they can do is be safe. Sarah and Kenny prepare to spend the night in the sheriff's office. Sheriff thanks him for staying with her, even though he does not want to. Uh, Kenny replies that he is not doing it for her, and Sarah remarks that things now feel different and wrong, much like they did in the forest. Sarah asks him if Boyd ever told him what happened and tells him that they got further into the forest. Boyd says it was like the place feeds on their pain, but she thinks it does more than that. Kenny is confused and Sarah reveals that Nathan used to be terrified of cicadas as a child because he thought they were monsters. Sarah asks if, fear, if the fears of the, towns, of the people that die in the township become a part of the forest and they are experiencing Nathan's nightmare. The cicadas swarm across town and the grounds of the colony house where Reggie explains to everyone that 
what happened to Paula and it searches for Donna. Fatima says that uh, she isn't inside and Christy adds that the last uh, she last saw her at the clinic hours ago and she was supposed to go home after. Reggie worries that they are all going to die and Fatima steps up and tells him to relay Boyd's instructions. Reggie says that no one can go to sleep and Fatima steps up and says they will focus on the following instructions while Boyd and Donna get themselves sorted. Fatima tells Reggie to change his clothes and tells everyone to partner up to make sure they don't fall asleep. Bakta asks how long and Fatima answers they will figure it out later. Ellis, noticing Marielle's worsening condition, asks Christy if they are okay. And Christy asks for a room and helps them upstairs. Donna and Boyd set up the talisman, but Randall criticizes Jim for turning against him just as they are about to get answers and tells him that uh, he is the reason his family is a mess. Jim and Randall to be begin to physically fight, but Boyd breaks it up and handcuffs Randall, telling him to keep his stupid ideas to himself so as not to get any of them killed. Boyd then turns to Jim and admonishes him for treating uh, their situation like a game after all they have been through. Jim apologizes for how things happened, but Donna tells him he shouldn't be surprised. Jim says he has to return to his family and thinks they can probably hotwire the van, but Boyd refuses to take the risk. Randall stands up, refusing to obey Boyd because he thinks Boyd is either part of the conspiracy or simply an idiot. Boyd restrains Randall and tells him that he lost his wife and best friend as a result of this place and threatens to tie Randall outside or to a tree outside so Randall can find out the truth for himself. Ellis leads Christy and Marielle to an empty bedroom. After Marielle notices the shackles on the bed, Ellis explains that it's for the people who freak out on their first night. Uh, Christy and Ellis leave to get supplies for the night, and he asks whether or not sleeping will affect his and Fatima's baby. Christy promises him that Fatima is not far enough along for that to be a concern. Ellis remarks how ordinary this would be would be amazing if but he is constantly afraid because of the township that something awful will happen christy tells him that pregnancy is a beautiful and weird wherever they are and are simply used to it because they see it every day much like the magic ball of fire christy explains that it is a an analogy from medical school to explain how even though they think they know much about the world it is still a mystery floating around space surrounded by a ball of fire that keeps them warm from millions of miles away it's weird but they are used to it tabitha and jade go over victor and eloise's drawings jade notices one of the civil war soldiers and asks why a little girl would draw that. Tabitha says that the pictures are based off of stories Victor's mother would tell, and Jade then asks why he is having visions of stories that a dead woman told 40 years ago. Tabitha then points out the drawing of the lighthouse and how Victor's mother said she needed to go there to free the children in order to get everyone home. Tabitha reveals that since her arrival, she's had dreams about a tower just like that and theorizes that the children are asking for her help. Tian Shen brings board games to Julie, Ethan, and Victor in order to make them feel better. Julie agrees, but Ethan just doesn't like that and asks if Jim is going to die, shocking everyone. Uh, Julie says he will be fine, but Ethan asks if they will die. Julie says they will be fine, but Ethan points out that everyone died when Victor was little. Victor tries to assure him that it won't happen like this that again, but Ethan is skeptical. Uh, Julie tries to comfort him by referencing the Cromenocle, but Ethan dismisses it, as a, dismisses it as a stupid story. Victor says that his mother used to say everything was a story, and they're the ones who get to decide how the story ends. Ethan asks if the story ended the way she wanted, prompting Julie and Tian Chen to scold him. Ethan then storms off with Julie following him. Boyd finishes explaining what happened with smiles at the clinic as he coats his uh, bullets in the creature's uh, bile. Donna suggests letting Randall go outside and test it. Uh, as several creatures advance on the RB, Boyd offers the gun to Randall, who agrees. As Boyd uncuffs him, Donna notices that the creatures have stopped moving, as does Jim. And Donna is worried because it is abnormal for the creatures. All four of them hear the music box and realize the noise is coming from the RV's radio. Marielle begins trying to break out of the room. 
Uh, Christy rushes in and stops her as Mariella insists that there is something in the room with them. Christy reminds Mariella that when she first went through withdrawals, she hallucinated, and all the monsters are outside the house. Marielle then blames Christy for causing her relapse and continues to tear apart the room before breaking down in tears and apologizing. Christy says that they are fine, uh, but Marielle says they are not and apologizes again. Christy hugs Marielle and is able to calm her, assuring her that she is there for her and that Marielle asks to be restrained to the bed with those restraints that are in there. Uh, Sarah points out her pin on the map. She mentions how Tian Chen used to say she was grateful her family got trapped altogether before apologizing for bringing it up. Sarah then tries to apologize for causing Kenny's father's death. Kenny stops her, and Sarah says she knows it is painful for Kenny and his mother to see her every day. Sarah continues to say that she tried to convince Void to let her go back into the forest, but Kenny stops her. Kenny tells her that he does not care about her or her pity party and that she is a murderer who deserves to go in the box. Sarah continues to try and apologize, but Kenny asks her to shut up and stop talking about his father. Sarah refuses, telling Kenny that she is not the only person who lost something as she has lost everything, including her sense of self, and she tried to, uh, and she is tired of being afraid and being Kenny's monster. Kenny tells her that if she wants out, Boyd has an extra gun in the desk and she can do what she wants before leaving uh, the room. Reggie runs around in panic, shaking people, uh, telling them not to go to sleep and that nothing can protect them. Ellis and Fatima try to calm him down, but Reggie rushes, uh, pushes Ellis down. Elgin restrains him as Fatima tries to... Uh, or tries in vain to calm him as Reggie tells everyone that they are all going to die. Ellis orders uh, Elgin to bring Reggie upstairs, and Elgin uh, drags the screaming Reggie up the stairs. Boyd prepares to leave to test the bullets. Donna tries to restrain him, but Boyd says he has heard this music, and every time he does, bad things happen, so they need to leave. As he prepares to exit, something dumps the bottom of the RV, scaring them all. Jim says that this is impossible because there is no space underneath them. The lights begin to flicker, and then Randall breaks a window and runs out, runs away on his own. Don and Jim her head for the van while Boyd fires at the his gun at the creatures. A vision of Abby then says his name, telling him to come back to her. She dis then she disappears, and Boyd continues to fire at the creatures, but the bullets have no effect. Boyd then runs to the van, which Jim successfully starts, and they drive off. Randall runs through the forest and is surrounded by a swarm of cicadas, which knock him down and crawl all over him and into his mouth. Kenny returns to find Sarah with Boyd's revolver. Kenny tells her to put away the gun, but Sarah says everyone wants her to die anyway, and Kenny even wanted her to go in the box. Kenny repeats his order, but Sarah uh, says that, uh, asks about how if she went in the box... The burden would not be on Kenny to kill her. Therefore, they will pretend she's in the box and let this place decide for him. Um, Sarah then loads two bullets, spins the cylinder, and points it at Kenny, telling him that he does not get to decide. Sarah then puts the gun to her head, cocks it, and pulls the trigger. Kenny grabs the gun and asks what is wrong with her. Elgin teaches Tilly how to crochet when Fatima arrives. Tilly compliments Fatima on her leadership and tells her that she's going to be a great mother. Fatima and Elgin are shocked, and Tilly says that she has multiple children and grandchildren and can spot a expecting mother. Fatima asks a uh, crestfallen Elgin uh, what is wrong, and he answers that he just remembered his dream. Matthias, or Matthias, I can't remember the character's name now, uh, notices Donna returning in the van. Upstairs, Chrissy tends to Mary Ellen, gets her some water at her request. Uh, when Christy leaves, Marielle notices a rustling noise in the walls, and soon uh, gets cicadas fill the room and swarm her as they did Randall as she shouts in terror. Christy returns but cannot see the cicadas and tries to call Marielle. Downstairs, people crowd around Boyd and Donna with Bakta and Meredith, asking how long they have to stay awake and what's hap why this is happening. Donna tells everyone to calm down and that they know that they are scared but trying to figure it out. In the meantime, they should listen to Boyd's instructions. Jim tries to sneak past the distracted door 
guard and leave to get back to his family. Boyd tells him that opening the door puts everyone at risk, but Jim says they are always at risk. Jim continues to struggle with the guard until both he and Boyd draw their guns on Jim. Uh, Christy then calls for help, and Boyd leaves to help her while Donna pushes uh, the crowd back. Marielle goes catatonic while her eyes glaze over. Christy begins to break down, but Boyd calms her and tells her that Marielle needs a doctor, not a fiancé. Christy points out that there is nothing medically that she can do, but Boyd tells her to help by holding on. Donna chases away onlookers while Ellis tries to tell Boyd something. Donna tells him to go, and Ellis brings his father to Elgin. Elgin explains that Fatima saying that she was pregnant made him remember the missing portion of his dream. Boyd is shocked by the news but tells him to continue. Elgin said there was a boy in white who kept repeating the same phrase. Here they come, they come for three, unless you stop the melody. Bakta says it's an old nursery rhyme that she remembers from her grandmother and recites it in its entirety. Entirety. Uh, they touch, they break, they steal. No one here is free. Here they come, they come for three, unless you stop the melody. Boyd then realizes that he has heard that portions of that of the rhyme before, and then Jade tells Tabitha her theory is crazy, but Tabitha thinks it is promising. They are interrupted by a shriek from Julie, who is experiencing the same ordeal as Randall and Marielle, and then everyone stares in fright, helpless, and that's what ends this episode of From. So I don't like the whole cicada thing. I like the, the smiling creature monsters, and the cicada thing kind of... I don't know, it's just not as interesting. In my opinion, I'll score the episode a 7.1 out of 10. And my characters of the episode are going to be Boyd and Christy. So you've heard everything that I have to say. Now it's your turn if you're a fan of From and you want to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. Please make sure that you Hulk smash the like button. Share the video with a friend. Put this video on any one of your social media platforms. Don't forget to sound off in the comment section about what your thoughts are on this episode of From. What would you rate it? And whom would be your characters of the episode? Remember to come back to this channel for the From Season 3 reviews. Uh, I don't know what time they'll air, but I'll get them up as soon as I can. And then last but certainly not least, don't forget to hit that, that, don't forget to hit that sub button. Subscribe to the channel, join the team, show your damn support, and be a part of something special. And you never know what you're going to see on JDev TV.